another approach in regards to osteomyelitis, bone infection of the fifth toe. Typically, uh, I do perform amputations and with flap closures. In this situation, I opted to do a different approach, a unorthodox approach, if I may, which is removal of the bones in a controlled diabetic that is also on anti-rheumatoid medications, which hinder healing. In her situation, we remove the bones that were infected, and you shall see on the x-ray, and she still has a toe. The toe healed very, very well. The toenail is unfortunately sacrificed, but nonetheless, in her situation was onychomycotic, which is fungus, which was fairly, fairly thick, and that could create further pressure, further damage, further ulcer ulcerations and infection. So in this situation, we removed it as well. And it looks phenomenal. And that's uh, about a month out. Everything is healed very well and will continue to scar in and take form and shape. And uh, it is non-symptomatic. It doesn't hurt. And it's healed very, very well. On x-ray, as you guys can tell where the web crease is, I'm so sorry. So all that bone was removed and she still has a shape of a toe. As I stated before, I usually perform amputations for such a situation and this is a different approach, especially in the controlled diabetic to remove the source of infection and leave a, a toe on. Now this will not apply to a big toe obviously for balance and function, but for a lesser toe, it's something to think about for future for your patients as well as your family members. Thank you. Bye-bye.